Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to our first bonus video thanks to the legendary reward tier on Patreon where we will be looking at Aggro Allies in Modern, a Naya colored ally deck full of ally synergies, so a nice little aggressive deck that uh, tops off its curve with Collected Company. So let's take a look at the entire list, starting out with our one drops where we have four copies of Expedition Envoy, one mana, two one ally, no special abilities but does still synergize with the rest of the deck and uh, kicks off our curve nicely. We also have four copies of Hada Freeblade, one mana O1, and whenever Hada Freeblade or another ally enters the battlefield under our control, we can put a plus one plus one counter on Hada Freeblade. So this is how most allies are awarded. Whenever they or another ally enters the battlefield, we get a nice sweet ability, in this case a plus one plus one counter. So by default the Hada Freeblade is going to be a one mana one two and gets bigger the more allies we play. Then you also have two copies of Path to Exile, two more copies in the sideboard as well to have some interaction with opposing creatures. But we don't want to have a ton of non-creature spells in the deck since the deck gets so much better the more allies we have and the more triggers we can stack up. So let's move on to our two drops where we have four copies of Kazandu Blademaster, double white for a 1-1 one, one with first strike and vigilance with the same plus one plus one counter ability whenever the Blademaster or another ally enters the battlefield under our control, so by default a 2 mana 2-2 two -two with first strike and vigilance and is only gonna grow from there. Next up we have four copies of Akum Battlesinger, one and a red for a 1-1 one, one with haste, and when the Battlesinger or another ally enters the battlefield under our control, we can have ally creatures we control get plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn, so a nice little anthem effect for the allies that are already in play. Next up we have four copies of Harabas Druid, one and a green for an O1 that can tap to add X mana of any one color, where X is the number of allies we control, so it can ramp us very nicely and allow us to empty our hand right away to uh, kill the opponent very quickly. Next up we have four copies of Oran Reef Survivalist, another classic ally, so one and a green for a 1-1, one, one. and when the Survivalist or another ally enter battlefield under our control, we get to put a plus one plus one counter on the Survivalist. Then we get to our three drops where we have three copies of Kabira Evangel, three mana for a 2-3 creature that gives protection from a chosen color whenever the Evangel or another ally enters the battlefield under our control. So protection entails that we cannot get damaged, enchanted, blocked or targeted by a card of the chosen color. And especially the blocked part means that our creatures can kind of go unblocked for a turn and we don't need to worry about the opponent having any blockers out as long as they have creatures of the chosen color. Next up we also have two copies of Lantern Scout, three mana for a 3-2 with Rally, which is essentially the same ally ability, so when the Lantern Scout or another ally enters the battlefield under our control, allies we control gain a lifelink until end of turn, so that's going to make it very difficult for any deck to try and outrace us, since we'll gain a ton of life. Next up we have three copies of Oracle's Bushwhacker, three mana for a 2-1 ally with haste, but it also has surge for one and a red. So if we've already cast a spell this turn, then we can play the Bushwhacker for its surge cost, which is one cheaper, and then when the Bushwhacker enters the battlefield, if it, the surge cost was paid, other creatures we control get plus one plus so and haste until end of turn, so it can deal a ton of damage out of nowhere. And then last but not least, four copies of Collected Company, four mana for an instant, that lets us take a look at the top six cards of our library, and then we can put up to two creature cards with convert mana cost three or less from among them onto the battlefield, and then the rest of the cards go on the bottom. So a very powerful effect that gives us some card advantage and can help us close out the game by finding a bunch of powerful allies to synergize with each other. And of course, since they enter the battlefield at the same time, they will both trigger each other as well, and that uh, can of course add a lot of extra plus one plus one counters or other beneficial abilities. Then quickly going over the mana base that's also hiding up here, we've got four copies of ally encampments, a land that's specifically made for the ally deck, so can tap to add colorless or can tap to add one mana of any color that we can spend on uh, allies, and we can also pay one and tap the ally encampment and sacrifice it to return target ally we control to our hand, so that's a nice way to re-trigger the various ally effects that we already have in play, or just the ally effect of the ally we return to our hand. Then we have a number of fetch lands, one Arid Mesa, we have four copies of Windswept Heath and one copy of Wooded Foothills that can search up either the basic lands or the shock lands. We've got one of each shock land in the Naya colors, one Temple Garden, one Stomping Ground, one Sacred Foundry, then uh, two basic plains, one basic forest, 
We also have two copies of Cavern of Souls, which is nice in an ally deck since that will make our allies uncounterable, as well as tapping for any color of mana when playing our allies. We also have two copies of Horizon Canopy to make sure we don't flood out, so we can sacrifice this to draw a card at any point, but it does cost us one life if we want to tap it for mana. And then also two copies of Inspiring Vantage, which enters Battlefield untapped if it's one of our first three lands. So that's the mana base, now let's quickly go over the sideboard, where we have the two additional copies of Path to Exile to deal with opposing creatures. We have a copy of Wear Tear to deal with artifacts or enchantments. An Ancient Grudge also as more artifact hate. We have two copies of Ondu Cleric, which shines against the burn decks, being able to gain a ton of life when he or another ally enters the battlefield. We have two copies of Rest in Peace to find graveyard decks. Two copies of Selfless Spirit, which is the only non-ally creature in the deck, but it does protect us from sweeper effects out of control decks. Then we also have two copies of Stony Silence as more artifact hate, especially against the Rise from the Ironworks deck, but also great against Affinity or Tron. We have one copy of Choke against the blue decks to keep islands tapped down, and then two copies of Gideon, ally of Zanikar, which shines against decks that uh, try and pick off our creatures one by one with spot removal spells or sweeper effects. That way Gideon can stay in play and generate ally tokens, since he does make ally tokens with a zero ability, or just go to town with uh, turning Gideon into a creature. Can also make an anthem effect, so very versatile planeswalker that fits perfectly into our deck. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, the sand seems like a keep. So let's run out free blade on one. And then yeah, we're basically looking for more cheap spells to go along with uh, Bushwhacker so we can surge him. So one drops and a third land is uh, what we most want to see. But I think it's still worth it to play free blade on one just to get the counters going. All right, there's a one drop. So all we need now is a third land. So cavern into survivalists. Get a counter on the free blade and one on the survivalist and get in for two. So yeah, if we draw land, we could be attacking for a lot of damage next turn. And if we don't, we just get to add another survivalist, which is not bad. Opponent so far on double island and no plays. All right, never mind. It's going to be a boomerang on the survivalist. All right, so some uh, interesting deck over there as well. Could be some sort of Howling Mine taking turns deck. Who knows? Um, we're just going to replay the Survivalist. Since I think that's better than playing the 1-drop, since we want to keep those for uh, the Bushwhacker. And get in for 3 points. So yeah, drawing a land would be amazing here, since then uh, cards like Boomerang get pretty bad if we can just empty our hand with Bushwhackers. And upkeep, our opponent's maybe gonna tap something down. Yep, Giga Drowse. Tapping down Free Blade, Survivalist on the land is my guess. At least we still get to play a 1 drop. And our opponent is throwing away cards. And alright, we did pick up the land. So I guess we just play Survivalist. So next turn we can go Bushwhacker plus 1 drop. And then we can do that for two subsequent turns. And say go. Alright, Temporal Mastery of a Miracle. So our opponent gets to take an extra turn for free. That's pretty lucky. Alright, so let's see what they do with their two mana this turn. Nothing. Alright, so not too bad. So yeah, this is some sort of time walk deck. But they don't have a Howling Mine effect in play, which is what they need to keep going off. I think we just jam one drop into Bushwhacker here. Let's play the Free Blade. Trigger all the allies. And then surge this Bushwhacker. And they can't counter it. And our opponent scoops it up. All right, so a very fast start here, able to beat the taking turns deck. So how do we want to combat this? Well, Choke seems like a very easy inclusion. Um, I think I want to wear tear to answer their enchantments. Just because being able to take out something like a Howling Mine or a Dictate of Crufix is going to be pretty key at beating them. 
I don't think we want anything else. Of course, we can take out Path to Exile since they don't have any creatures. Could also make an argument for Gideon, but it is an expensive card and I don't want to have too many of those. And yeah, I don't think we want anything else. Could also make argument for Ancient Grudge just for Howling Mine, but where it is a bit more versatile. So I think we just submit this and just try and be as fast as possible. All right, so we have a five lander without Horizon Canopy. Yeah, this is gonna be a mulligan. All right, this one I think we can keep. I guess the Evangel is also pretty bad since it doesn't really do much with its protection, but it is still an ally that triggers the other allies. So who knows, maybe this could have been a Gideon, but in this hand, the Evangel looks pretty good as well. So yeah, I'll keep and uh, bottom the Lantern Scout, which is also a bit lackluster. But again, just another ally to trigger the various other allies. So let's play Cavern into Envoy. Say go. And a Skyline Cascade. Could keep something tapped down, but nothing's tapped, so it doesn't do anything. Alright, so could play the Druid, but we don't have a ton of expensive cards in hand, so I think I just like playing the Battle Singer here and get that going. And I guess we could fetch since our life total doesn't really matter and this thins out the deck slightly. And sure, there's a Lantern Scout on the bottom, but that's still an okay draw, all things considered. So let's get Sacred Foundry and play Battle Singer. I guess I should have tapped this for uncounterable mana. The Time Walk deck usually doesn't play a ton of cheap counter spells. Right, let's get in for five. Opponent plays third land, says go. Could play Evangel just to be mana efficient, that's probably fine. And then next turn we can go double two drop. Seems like a plan to me. So let's play Ally Encampment. This time make sure to tap our cavern and play Evangel. And we'll choose blue. Alright, let's get in for five. Opponent already down to ten. As they cast end of turn Dictate of Crufix. So now they get to draw an extra card, but we do as well. They just get the first crack at it since it had flash. And alright, exhaustion. Won't be able to untap any of our permanents, which is unfortunate, but we still get to add a free blade at least. So that's nice. I guess I didn't consider Exhaustion when playing my lands. Should have kept the ally encampment as a one in hand so we could still cast all our spells. But this works out. So I'll play the free blade, trigger a bunch of stuff, and then attack for three with the Evangel. So next turn our opponent can start time walking essentially. And hopefully they don't get to take all the turns. Alright, Barl's Expertise, pretty good as well here. And they cast an Exhaustion for free, so we don't get to untap. That was a pretty back-breaking Barl's Expertise, not gonna lie. Not much we can do here. Play a tap land, say go. Hope they're out of Exhaustions and Time Walks, but that's essentially their entire deck. Right, Howling Mine into another Exhaustion. Alright, that's a third one. Let's hope to draw an untapped land, I guess. All right, so we get to add a one drop to the board. Probably just a free blade. And say go. And then we have to discard to hand size. I don't think we'll need the uh, druid any longer. All right, so now the opponent draws three cards per turn. As long as they draw a couple of time walk effects, they might be able to take infinite turns here, essentially. No, all right, maybe they have something else in mind. All right, they let us draw. Still haven't hit a collected company. All right, main phase, so looks like we will be able to cast some spells after all. So let's crack this Windswept Heath. Again, our life total is not too relevant, so I don't mind getting the untapped one here. How do we want to sequence things? I guess Cryptic Command can tap down our team and counter something. So I just want to play enough cards to present lethal, but not go all in necessarily. Let's play Expedition Envoy. And play another Expedition Envoy. And 
and then play an uncounterable battle singer. And that's gonna boomerang the first one. All right, fair enough. And boomerang, not a free blade, okay. So, battle singer triggers. And then we can replay Battle Singer and then play Free Blade, and that should be lethal. And yeah, opponent scoops it up. All right, so I guess they were out of uh, interactive spells and couldn't take all the turns. So let's move on to the next one. All right, we're on the play. And yeah, this hand seems fine. Turn one, Free Blade. Turn two, Survivalists. Turn three, I guess turn two, Blade Master even. Turn one planes, says go. This uh, Harabaz Druid is also pretty tempting since we only have the two lands and it would be a way for us to empty our hand pretty quickly. So I'm not opposed to playing the Harabaz Druid here. So let's get a Temple Garden, play Harabaz Druid, trigger the Freeblade, get in for two. Eh, opponent had a path to exile, that's okay. Makes our plan of ramping with the druid less uh, impressive since now we get a free land anyways. But I think we'll still take it. So next turn we get to unload our hand pretty much. Get to go a blade master. Then we can tap this for two mana. Play survivalist, play envoy. I think that's the plan here. So Blade Master triggers, and this maximizes the number of triggers we get essentially from our various allies. Since if we play the Envoy first, then we miss out on a trigger on the Survivalist. So I guess we can play the Encampments. Play Survivalist. And then tap this for white. Play Expedition Envoy. And say go. And we still have these encampments we could also use to replay Envoys, for example, just to re-trigger Survivalist and Blademaster. So it looks like we're up against maybe a blue-white control deck. Field of Ruin makes an appearance. So yeah, the turn four, Supreme Verdict or Wrath of God or whatever is going to be pretty devastating. But we do get to return allies with the encampment at least. So I think we just attack here. Hit them for nine. Right, they've got Snapcaster Path. So I think we Snapcaster their Snapcaster since we don't want them to block. And they path our Blade Master, which we can return with the encampments. And then still hit them for five. We did ramp the opponent for one, which is unfortunate, but I think it was necessary. All right, and we can still redeploy the Blade Master. We're probably not beating a Wrath effect anyways, so might as well not play around it. So we still have our encampment up, just in case. Opponent's got five mana, no triple blue, so Cryptic is not uh, an option. Instead, the Tension Sphere. What's that gonna target? Probably the Survivalists, all right. Let's uh, pick it back up, I guess. Probably Stomping Ground. So at least we got some value out of the encampments. And now we pick up another Blade Master, which is interesting. So can uh, play the Blade Master. I guess the first rank and Vigilance is not too relevant, only against opposing Snapcaster Mages. I guess we still run it out. It doesn't really matter that our opponent knows we have a Survivalist as our last remaining card. So let's trigger the Blade Master that's already in play. And then tap this for green. Play Survivalist. And get in there for a bunch. Opponent's got on Opts, maybe digging for a Path to Exile. Or they're setting up their Sweeper next turn, which is going to be pretty backbreaking. I guess their Sweeper could be a Terminus at 6 mana, which has been uh, 
increasing in popularity lately. So then the Path to Exile we cast on the Snapcaster is going to be extra punishing. No, nope, instead just a Detention Sphere. All right, still pretty good here against both Blade Masters. I guess that was the other consideration when uh, deciding in which order to play our creatures. We could have played around second Detention Sphere, but usually they only play one in the main deck, so I didn't play around the second one. All right, so we're left with not a lot here. Something like a Collected Company would have been nice. But I guess our opponent is pretty low. Already down to five, only two cards in hand, so I guess I can't complain too much. And our opponent's going to field of ruin the red mana. That's fine. We'll get a forest. And a Gideon of the Trials. It's going to plus on the Survivalist, makes sense. Another Field of Ruin. Alright, opponent's got one card left in hand. And we pick up another Survivalist, so... Playing Survivalist doesn't accomplish much pre-combat here, so we might as well attack first. And do we attack Gideon or our opponent's life total? So the problem with attacking our opponent's life total is that our opponent will always have the option of making an emblem with Gideon, which then forces us to attack Gideon anyways. But I think in this spot I still like attacking their life total as opposed to Gideon. So let's do that. And I think it's worth it to play the Survivalist from a Cavern of Souls just in case they have a Counterspell. So uncounterable survivalists. And they might field of ruin the cavern end of turn, which is fine. Still have a basic left. Alright, there's a field of ruin. Get a planes. So our opponent could have been at two had we changed the order of survivalist and uh, our blade master a few turns ago. Let's see if it's gonna be relevant or not. Gideon Jura, alright, opponent's got a pair of Gideons. Gideon Jura can force us to attack their Gideon and then plus with the other one as well. All right, so we're gonna need to find something like a collected company to get out of this mess. So we can only deal four damage to Gideon Jura. And all right, there's a company, so let's go for it. Just gonna main phase it. Can play for a mana leak. And what did we find? Double Battle Singer, that's pretty tempting over Evangels. Evangels don't really do much here since the protection doesn't help again against uh, Gideon. So yeah, let's just go with Double Battle Singer. And then have a bunch of triggers. So Gideon Jura down. And then hope to dodge a Supreme Verdict for one turn. And we should be good. And our opponent scoops it up. All right, it's awesome. Timely collected company top deck. All right, so how do we want a sideboard? Path to Exile taken out. The Evangel is also pretty weak. So is a Lantern Scout. Since their abilities aren't too relevant against control. Gideon Alive Zendikar is pretty good. Choke's great. And I don't mind a Wear Tear and the Selfless Spirits to give us some insurance against Sweeper effects. And I think that's it. And then we still have to add one more card. I guess we go with uh, Lantern Scout over the Evangel just because of the extra power, although I guess the protection could be relevant against like a Snapcaster Mage. Don't think we want to rest in peace. Blue White doesn't rely too much on its graveyard. Alright, let's uh, try this. And this opening hands Quite on the expensive side with double company, but against the control decks you usually have time to get up to four mana, so we'll keep. All right, let's play Windswept Heath, Sago. This also plays around Spreading Seas, even though recent blue-white versions have been cutting Spreading Seas, but now our opponent can't target the Fetchland since we can just sacrifice it in response. Field of Ruin. Ascanta, yep. All right. That's also why we brought in the wear tear. Can also deal with Detention Sphere. Let's get a Temple Garden. Alright, the free blade a turn late. So which two drop do we want to play? I'm tempted to just play the Battle Singer since their opponent has Field of Ruin, they might take us off red mana, so we wanna deploy the red cards while we can. 
and the haste damage is pretty nice. Get in for two. If we draw land, we could go free blade into bushwhacker, which is also pretty nice. Right, instead, another survivalist. I think we just play a blade master now. And get in for two. Opponent's gonna fetch Flooded Strand. And the reason we want to play Blade Master over Battle Singer is because of the Tension Sphere again. Otherwise, we might lose both Battle Singers. So, it looks like a counter spell's happening. Nope, opponent's using Field of Ruin on the Red Source since they saw we didn't have Basic Mountain. But that will enable us to play the Free Blade still this turn. So, maybe a bit of an ambitious play. And then play Free Blade. And attack for three. Alright, let's see if they have the turn for Verdict this time around. And missing the land drops here with double company is pretty painful. Otherwise, we would be able to rebuild pretty quickly in the face of a sweeper. Alright, Bone lets us on tap. Kind of want to play the Harabas Druid here just to establish our mana. I think that's reasonable. Bone doesn't have cryptic mana up, so that's not a concern. So let's see if they let this one resolve. Alright. I guess our opponent could have a Settle the Wreckage at 4 mana, that's sometimes a sideboard card. So I guess we could play around that a little bit by just attacking with 2 creatures. I mean, getting 3 lands is nice, but I guess there's only 2 left in the deck. So yeah, maybe attacking with 2 creatures is fine here. And then the question is, do we attack with the Battle Singer? I think we definitely want to attack with the Blade Master just to get in for more damage. And the question is, do we attack with the Free Blade or the Battle Singer? I guess we can go Free Blade plus Blade Master, since they don't get ambushed by Snapcaster Mage. Sure. Alright, there's a Snapcaster on Opt. And they're just gonna Chum Block. Alright, that's good for us. But that might mean they have a Sweeper incoming next turn. And then we're gonna lose the Druid as well, which we kind of need for mana. Alright, let's see if they have the Sweeper here. Colonnade goes to the graveyard, and it looks like a Verdict. Alright, so that's too bad. Let's rebuild with Survivalists. We were kind of hoping our opponent would cast Path to Exile this game, since we could have used the extra mana. And for mana Gideon, opponent's got more Gideons than we do. It's gonna make a token. Alright, so we're weak to the Tension Sphere, but there's not much we can do about it. Attack Gideon. Opponent on Chum Blocks. And their Ascanta is about to transform as well, which is bad news. Alright, they decide to keep the card on top, which... I'm not sure if it's a good thing or a bad thing. Alright, the Tension Sphere. So, we kept the hand based on the strength of Collected Company, but never drew a third land. Alright, it's a start, I guess. Play a Battle Singer. Don't even know if we want to trade, honestly, for the Knight Ally token. Don't think we do. I guess it's also reason to want the protection from our 3-drop. That's not a card I was thinking about, getting out of Zendikar. So yeah, I guess we made the right call to keep in the protection 3-drop as opposed to the lifelink one. Skanta finally transforms. We'll need to get pretty lucky to still win this one. The fairy as well. It's gonna plus. Alright, so we need this Collected Company to resolve and have something pretty good. Our opponent might have taken out some of their counter spells because they did see Cavern of Souls. So there's that. Let's get some red mana in there. And I'm just gonna main phase it. Alright, let's see what we get. Just a bunch of one drops and a survivalist. I guess we get free blade and survivalist here. And a whole bunch of triggers. Alright, so could attack with the Battle Singer. I think we still hold her back. 
since trading for a knight ally token seems bad when we have the chance of finding our protection ally all right they're gonna path the survivalists end of turn we'll get a forest another path all right so they did have a bunch of paths but they rightfully decided not to use them earlier since uh they would ramp us otherwise but yeah now we're in pretty rough shape opponents drawing multiple cars a turn and our only hope is that this last collected company finds some goodies definitely gonna concede if they have a counter spell or if we brick opponent could probably get in there with the knights at this point they're gonna send one Opponent's gonna activate Ascanta in response to the Teferi trigger, so they get to untap Ascanta still. And they find Cryptic commands, alright, so they did keep in Cryptics, that's good to know for game 3. And yeah, they have Cryptic command mana up now, so this company is gonna get countered. And that's pretty much all she wrote. I guess we can play the Cryptic command in response to the Ascanta activation end of turn to still have a shot at using it. But it's not a pretty one since we miss out on the value from these battle singers. I guess we could attack our opponent now and trade for the knight ally tokens. Opponent's gonna trade. We have to let this happen. Say go and hope they use Ascanta. They do. We'll let that resolve before playing the company. But I still don't know what the company can really find to get us out of this mess. No. Blade Master and a Bushwhacker, or a Blade Master and a Free Blade. Guess we take the Free Blade. Alright, let's say go. Bowen's got eight cards in hand, so timely reinforcements as well, making three tokens, gaining six life. Alright, I'm gonna pack things up here. So let's go to game three. Where do we want to change anything? Don't think we do. We could consider more evangels but i think i like the cards we have over it definitely want to be on the play and yeah looks like a keep to me don't have double white yet for the blade master but i'm sure we'll find it at some point and choke is a pretty nice incentive to keep this hand since that can knock out half of the opponent's lands so i think we lead with a plane still since i would prefer to play blade master on two as opposed to survivalist if we pick up the white land Alright, so this probably wants to get white red or white green. I think white red since we've seen that our opponent pretty aggressively uses Field of Rune on our red sources. So I think that's probably fine. Play Blade Master. Opponent's gonna fetch for an untap plant, so either opt or spell snare. Alright, actually spell snare, so it's not a card you see every day, but at least they fetched an island so that's good for choke don't think we want to choke quite yet since we first want to kind of force them to get an extra island i guess uh, logic knot could be a thing so i'll get this untapped again the life total is not too relevant on our part and play blade master i think one's gonna fetch again get another hallowed fountain untapped all right and what is this mana leak yep all right fair enough so choke looking pretty good so let's hope they tap out for something field of ruin but our opponent's just gonna say go not our battle singer don't think we want to tap out for choke we'll just play a survivalist and snapcaster mage spell snare that's annoying all right so our opponent got a snapcaster in play and land four. Let's hope they keep getting islands. All right, free blades, not bad. So now we can go battle singer into free blade, or free blade into battle singer. I guess the one extra counter on free blades more relevant than getting in for one extra damage this turn with the battle singer. So we'll lead with the free blade, get a counter, and then I guess we could just surge the bushwhacker as well. That might actually be better since that makes use of the fact that we cast a spell already. And it's a pretty juicy target for a cryptic command. Yeah, disallow, did not expect to see that one. So no bushwhacker for us. 
Let's hope they get an island here. Yep, all right. So choke increasing in value every second. And there's Gideon, all right. So the problem with choke now is that our opponent has a pretty good board presence already, but it is still gonna cripple them quite a bit. We'll just have to fight through what our opponent has in play as opposed to what they might still play in the future. So we could double Battle Singer, but yeah, let's just choke them real good here. That's what they get for playing those silly islands. And no attacks for us. So now we just need to be able to take out this Gideon. Celestial Colonnade does on tap, unfortunately. But our opponent still can't do much besides use their Planeswalker, which, I mean, is still pretty good here. Opponent can make a 2-2 ally every turn, and we just have to rely on top decks. Collected Company would be a pretty big draw here. So let's fetch, get Temple Garden tapped. And all right, Selfless Spirit can fly over and do some damage as well. So we can go Selfless Spirit plus Battle Singer and make some attacks. Don't hate that. So let's go after Gideon. I guess we could just let damage happen since we're eating one of the allies and just losing a Battle Singer. So I'm not gonna sag the spirit here. Gideon is still at for loyalty, but we can also pressure Gideon with our selfless spirit. Alright, Porn keeps making allies. Snapcaster are gonna stay home. Alright, another land, unfortunately. I guess we play the land to play around Mana Leak. Play Battle Singer. Could attack Gideon with everyone. Porn is just gonna trade for the Battle Singer. Maybe chum block the free blade, take two, or they could just let Gideon die and trade for the battle singer. I guess they could also have some more removal for their white mana. I think we just send everyone at Gideon. Need to get rid of him. Uh, looks like they have another snapcaster to flash in here as an ambush viper. Ambush viper would have been better since at least it has death touch. Alright, so here I think I like using the Selfless Spirit to uh, save our two other creatures. That would mean our opponent has a Gideon with a token versus Battle Singer and a pretty big Free Blade. Is that better than Selfless Spirit versus Gideon on two loyalty with a token? I'm not sure actually. Yeah, it feels right to sag the Spirit here. And say go. Alright, Pwn does have an island. They get one use out of it, and it's a uh, timely reinforcements. Yeah, that's uh, pretty good here. So that kind of explains maybe why the opponent blocked the way they did. And now I wish we had the selfless spirit to fly over those tokens. Alright, horizon canopy at least we can cycle. And ally encampment doesn't do a ton for us here. So I think we just have to say go. So yeah, definitely need to find something like a collected company as soon as possible, since this Gideon is proving to be quite a problem. If we knew our opponent had multiple Gideon allies of Zenikar in their deck, we would have kept in more of the protection ally. We'll get a planes. Alright, Haraba's Druid doesn't do a ton for us, but I guess it's still worth playing. Play the encampment, say go. Despite the choke, her opponent actually able to deploy most of their hand. Alright, opponent's gonna force the issue on the encampments. I guess we sack it to return the battle singer. That way they don't get to search up a land, which is probably what they wanted here. So that's gonna leave them with two lands that can untap. So Alright, Gideon's gonna get aggressive since we are at 9 after all. So let's just block a 2-2, two -two, take 7, and then hope to top deck something. Alright, find our own Gideon. Yeah, it's uh, not a bad one. So we can play the Battle Singer. 
Then tap this for white. Play around Gideon. And I think we just make a token. And then say go. Since I don't think we can attack when we're at two. Alright, so our Gideon kind of keeps the opponent's Gideon in check. And if we ever find our protection ally, then it's game over. Opponent's just gonna make a token, say go. And there's a company, alright. Let's spin the wheel. And just find some free blades, still fine though. A million triggers. Make a token with Gideon. More triggers. And now I feel confident attacking. Opponent's just gonna chump with the token, that's fine. Alright, opponent finds a plane, so they can cast a 3-drop. Gonna make a token with Gideon. Find Expedition Envoy. Trigger a bunch of creatures. Make another token. A bunch more triggers. I guess we can just go after our opponent now. Opponent's gonna chomp. Alright, so they might be hoping to find a fourth untapped plan to be able to cast a Supreme Verdict. So hopefully that doesn't happen. But we do kill them next turn, most likely. Or close enough. Alright, another druid. Let's play the druids. Let's see, can we kill our opponent here? Could also make an emblem with Gideon. Attack with everyone. Opponent's got three blockers and then they still take... Four... yeah, that's still lethal. If they don't have interaction, so I'm just gonna go for it here. All creatures at our opponents. And then hope they just don't have a million path to exiles. Alright, and that does it, so managed to beat blue-white control in three games, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and this looks like an okay keep. Unexciting, but keepable. Turn on Envoy, turn to Survivalist, turn 3, hopefully find a land. So we can deploy one of the 3-drops. Alright, the Druid's a nice 2-drop for this hand, since it's quite expensive. Turn out the Envoy. Turn one overgrown tomb, so it could be a green mid-range deck. It looks like Junt, which uh, might be a rough one, since I do tend to have quite a bit of removal. And yep, there's a lightning bolt. Alright, so do we run out a druid or do we run out survivalist in the face of a potential removal spell? So we can definitely fetch a basic here. Get a planes. I think I like the survivalist. Since now that we have the third land, we can just play a 3-drop next turn. And our opponent did not have Fatal Push. Let's see if they have a Liliana of the Veil. That would be annoying here. Nope, just a Thought Seize. Probably gonna take the path to Exile to protect something like a Tarmogoyf or a Dark Confidence. Alright, they take the Evangel instead. Which... I guess also makes sense since we can attack past the blocker, but opponent does have the confidence and we have path for it, so a little strange that they decided not to take the path there. Let's just path the confident right now and then play the druid. I think we get a stomping ground. And attack for three. Alright, so... We'll have to see here if our opponents cast a Bloodbraid Elf into something good, then we could be in trouble. But we do have their next creature covered with the second path and they don't know about it, so... Yeah, opponent just says go. So we get to play a Blade Master. Trigger both, and then tap this for white. Play Lantern Scouts, and trigger everything, and attack for five. Alright, put them down to 9, we're up to 18, so not sure what their hand could be. And our opponent concedes, alright. So, opponent might have had a lot of lands there. So against Chunt, I like Gideon, 
like the extra path to exile to answer Tarmogoyfs. And opponent might also have a one of damnation or some sweeper effect, so selfless spirit definitely could be good. And I don't think we want rest in peace. So Gideon's and paths, and then what do we cut? I don't think Lantern Scout is really necessary. And I could see cutting a Battle Singer just because it might have a hard time attacking past something like a Tarmogoyf. This one will have to mulligan. And this one looks like a keep. And then probably want to keep the path on top to answer an opposing 2-drop creature. So we have turn 1 Free Blade, turn 2 Blade Master, turn 3 Battle Singer with Path to Exile, which is pretty good. Opponent leads with a tapped Stomping Ground. And there's a Swamp into Dark Confidence. Alright, so Dark Confidence, we might have to path right away, but it's tempting to want to develop our board first, since playing Path to Exile next turn is a lot more mana efficient. On the other hand, if they find a Hand Disruption spell, then they can take away the path. I think we still go for the Blade Master here, and then hope that the one extra draw from Confident is not gonna destroy us too much. And get in for two. Let's see what they reveal. Stomping Ground, alright, so they got a free draw there with no damage. But at least it's not a spell. Bloodstay Mire, let's see if they have a Liliana of the Veil. Yep, that's fine. So we can sacrifice a one drop here. And then next turn we can clean up Liliana, get rid of the Dark Confidence and pressure our opponent. And this company is also great. So first things first, path the Confidence. Play Battle Singer. And send four other opponents. And two at Liliana. Alright. So don't hate our spots. And there's a stomping ground we knew about untapped, so opponent planning to use all five mana this turn. And once for Abrupt Decay on the Blade Master. Could have a Colagans command here, which would be pretty painful. Nope, just a Tarmogoyf. That's also a problem. Alright, land would be nice. Perfect. So I think we want to preserve our life total and just get a planes here. And then I'll main phase this company in case we hit something good. Uh, not quite. So we could attack with the Bushwhacker and the Battle Singer, but our opponent gets to block Bushwhacker, take three down to six. Don't think we want to do that. So yeah, now we have to wait for essentially the protection ally to push through Tarmogoy for a path to exile. Something like that. Our opponent definitely with the better top decks in general. But we do have some good top decks too. Get in Ally of Zanikar, which we boarded in. Collected Company, the Protection Ally, Path to Exile. Untapped Overgrown Tomb. Alright, opponent planning to use all six mana for Scavenging Ooze that can gain them some life back. And it's gonna make it difficult to attack. Tarmogoyf stays on defense, and there's a survivalist, which is okay. Could also pick up the bushwhacker again with the encampments. We'll do some quick math to see if we have lethal that way. So we can tap this for four red, which is enough to play Battle Singer and surge the bushwhacker. Yeah, I think we might uh, just go for it here. So let's tap this for red. Use the encampments to return the bushwhacker. Then play the Battle Singer. Trigger everything. And then surge the Bushwhacker. And then we'll see where we're at. Definitely have a very large Survivalist, so if they don't have removal for that, that's great. And then, yeah, I think we just send everyone and hope for the best. And our opponent concedes. Awesome! So managed to be jumped in two swift games with a nice combo finish here with the Bushwhacker. So I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this gameplay. And as always, have a nice day. 
I also want to thank all my patrons for supporting the channel, and you can do so yourself as well over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd, where you get cool rewards for supporting the channel, as well as getting us closer to our goals, where with every goal reached, we will release an additional weekly series. So if you want to see more content, Patreon is the place to go.